Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to ask you a question. Do you think it's possible to get a great sounding 5.1 home theater speaker system for less than $1,100? Or how about a 7.1 system for under $1,500? Sound too good to be true? Well, stick around because today we're going to find out right after the intro. <music> With current events the way they are, I'm sure you've noticed that a lot of the things we normally take for granted, like going out to the movies for instance, have changed dramatically. In fact, a few big names in the commercial theater business have filed for bankruptcy and there are rumors they may close for good. Because of these unfortunate events, a lot of people have decided to install home theaters so they can get the feeling of going to the movies without having to leave their house. The problem is, if you're new to all this home theater stuff, there's a lot to learn before you can make an educated decision on which types of equipment will work best for you. That's why today we're reviewing this 5.1 surround sound speaker system from RSL. At just $1,079, it's sure to fit the budget, but is the quality good enough that you're not going to want to upgrade anytime soon? Well, let's take a look at them and see. The package RSL sent us for review is the CG3 5.1 Home Theater Speaker System. All the speakers came double boxed and well packed with high density polyethylene, so it seems like RSL has done as much as possible to eliminate any chance of receiving damaged speakers because of shipping. The CG3 5.1 system is priced at a very affordable $1,079 and consists of one CG23 speaker for the center channel, this speaker has two 4-inch Kevlar coned high excursion woofers along with a 1-inch silk dome tweeter. You also get four CG3 bookshelf speakers, two for the right and left front and two for the back surrounds, all of which have one 4-inch Kevlar coned high excursion woofer and one 1-inch silk dome tweeter. And to handle the low end, you also get one of RSL's Speedwoofer 10S subwoofers which features a 10 inch high excursion cast frame woofer, a 350 watt class D amplifier, and a built in wireless receiver on all models, which can be used with an optional $50 wireless transmitter. We've already done a full review of this little Dynamo of a sub and we were very impressed by its performance. So if you want to check that out, we'll leave a link below. RSL also sent us two more of the CG23 speakers which can be used to upgrade the front right and left CG3 speakers to the CG23 speakers. This gives you three of the larger CG23 speakers across the front sound stage for a better tonal match and better bass response. RSL offers this package for $1,239, so it's only $160 more than the CG3 system, and of course, we'll be reviewing both of these systems today to see how much of a difference there is between the two. Taking a closer look at the CG3 speakers, you'll notice a great looking hand painted piano black finish. You may also notice that the tweeter isn't placed at the top of the speaker like it would be in most other designs. This is because of RSL's compression guide cabinet design. As you can see here, there's an internal diagonal board that divides the enclosure into areas of expansion and compression. In order for this to work properly, the woofer had to be placed on top. This design adds acoustic resistance to the cabinet, giving the RSL speaker a mix of both the punchy, fast response of a sealed speaker and the low frequency extension of a ported speaker. This is true for all of RSL's speaker lineup, as well as their Speedwoofer line of subs. At the bottom of the speaker, you can see the slotted port. This is another interesting design that you often don't see on other manufacturer's speakers, because this isn't just a regular port. It's the compression guide tuning slot, which is designed to mitigate the effects of port chuffing and give the speaker a wide, detailed, and full sound stage. I think this, along with the way the drivers are arranged, makes for a really good looking speaker. On the back, we have the speaker binding posts that will accept either straight wire or banana plugs, and they also have built-in mounting brackets along with a quarter inch threaded mounting point. The CG23 speakers are very similar in design, except they have two woofers along with two slotted ports and obviously they're bigger. The Speedwoofer 10S that comes with the system has a nice textured matte black finish, but just in case you're not into black, RSL also offers all of their speakers in white cabinets as well. 
Now before we get into the demos, we want to mention that RSL was kind enough to allow us to take apart some of these speakers just like we did with the Speedwoofer 10S in our review and see what they look like on the inside. First, we opened up the CG3 bookshelf speaker. It has a pretty beefy magnet on the back that looks to be almost the same diameter as the cone itself. Another thing I really like is the black Kevlar cone, which goes great with the piano black finish of the speaker. RSL also uses their own crossover design in all of their speakers that are made with premium polypropylene capacitors, gold-plated speaker terminals, and air core inductors, which are a lot better at filtering out high-frequency signals than iron core inductors that can induce more distortion. And RSL actually uses a PCB to hold all of the crossover components together. Most cheaper speakers, believe it or not, glue all of their components straight down into the bottom of the cabinet, making future repairs much more difficult. I think this really shows that RSL isn't cutting corners just to meet a certain profit margin. They're actually building quality speakers and offering them at a very affordable price. One thing to note here is that both the CG23 and the CG3 speakers use neodymium magnets on the tweeters, which are quite a bit more costly than regular ferrite magnets. Alright, with all that out of the way, it's time to start hooking everything up so we can give these speakers a test drive. We started the evaluation with the CG3 5.1 system, which RSL sells for $1,079. The receiver we used is the Yamaha RX V663 rated at 95 watts per channel into 8 ohms. The CG3 bookshelf speakers were placed on these speaker stands and connected to the Yamaha receiver with banana plugs. We then used an RCA cable to connect from the receiver's LFE output into the Speedwoofer 10S's LFE input. Next, we used the flow chart printed on the back of the Speedwoofer 10S which indicated that we needed to bypass the internal crossover by moving the switch to bypass. And as I mentioned before, if you want a complete explanation on how everything works on the back of the Speedwoofer 10S, go ahead and check out our complete review. Link is in the description. The center channel was placed in the middle of our entertainment center, which is where we usually keep our Vandersteen VCC1 center channel, which I'll discuss more in a bit. And the rear surrounds were placed at the back of the room on top of our current Vandersteen VSM-1 on-wall speakers. The first thing I notice about this whole setup is just how compact and low profile the speakers are. And in my opinion, they blend into the space really well without taking up a whole lot of room. Next, it's time for the demos. For the source, we're going to be playing 4K UHD movies on our Sony UVP X800 4K player. First, with movies, we chose to try out Avengers Endgame, The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey, John Wick Chapter 2, and Transformers The Last Night. We feel that all of these movies will give the speakers and the sub a chance to stretch their legs with well-recorded dialogue and dynamics throughout the whole track. Kicking things off with The Hobbit, the reason why we wanted to start with this movie is because of the dialogue right at the beginning of the movie, where Bilbo is writing his book about his journey and the history of Middle-earth leading up to the events that take place in these movies. Throughout this first part of the movie, Bilbo was whispering, and these low volume parts of the dialogue can end up sounding very bright if your center channel isn't up to the task but the CG23 managed to reproduce very clear, smooth dialogue that was never fatiguing or harsh sounding. There was the city of Dale. Its markets known far and wide. Next, with Avengers Endgame, the first thing we notice is just how big these little speakers sounded. Boss, wake up! <laughs> This is largely thanks to the compression guide cabinet and oddly enough, RSL's choice of using smaller drivers with their speakers. With smaller drivers, RSL is able to get better imaging and clarity, but a smaller driver usually won't have as much bass output. That's where the compression guide comes in, helping to extend the frequency response of these speakers down past what they could usually do in a sealed box, all with less distortion. We finished up by demoing John Wick 2 and Transformers The Last Night, 
And again, we were really set back by just how well the CG3 system filled our large living room with crystal clear, spacious, and impactful sound that you would never expect from such a small, compact set of speakers. All of the speakers just seemed to disappear in the test, and we really felt like we could point out exactly where things were happening around us in the room. Not once did these speakers sound confused or crowded. Everything was just clean and well-defined. One thing that we really like about RSL is that they build and design their speakers to put music first. And something I've learned throughout my years of building home theater setups is that if a speaker sounds good with music, it's going to be even better for home theater. If you want to see some of the tracks that we use to demo this system, you can check out our demo tracks playlist in the description below. But the gist of it is, every song that we threw out these speakers came out sounding great. And something I have to mention here is just how good the Speedwoofer sounds with music. Although I was very impressed with it while watching movies, it really came into its own with music which in my opinion is a much higher bar for a subwoofer to reach. So all in all, we really like the CG3 5.1 system. It's amazing that they can put together such a high quality, great sounding set of speakers for under $1,100. So just to put this into perspective, this Vandersteen VCC1 center channel that I have here in my living room theater, which is Vandersteen's entry level model, retails for $899. Add a couple hundred dollars to that and you can get this whole RSL 5.1 surround sound system. This is a perfect example of diminishing returns. Just because you spend twice as much or more doesn't mean you're going to get something that's twice as good. All right, as great of a system as this CG3 5.1 is, RSL also sent us two more of the CG23 speakers, which is a $160 upgrade from the regular CG3 5.1 system. So we went ahead and swapped out the front left and right speakers for these bigger LCR models to see if it was a worthwhile upgrade. Listening to all of the previously mentioned content in our second round of tests, we think it's important to mention that having all three of the same speakers on the front sound stage is highly beneficial because this gives an exact tonal match across your left, center, and right speakers. This is very important when things are panning from left to right, for example. If you don't have the same speakers across the front sound stage, you're likely to hear a difference as objects move around the room. The biggest difference between the CG3 and the CG23 is the added woofer and port, which does explain why the CG23 is rated to go down to 85 Hz compared to 100 Hz for the CG3. This also explains why we noticed a fuller, more defined mid-range that, like RSL claims, seemed to project further into the room which also verifies their claim that the CG23 speakers are better for larger rooms than the CG3s. So our conclusion is that the CG23 5.1 system is definitely a worthwhile upgrade over the CG3 system, especially if you feel like your room would benefit from having the larger speakers. But if you don't want to spend the extra $160, then the CG3 is still a great sounding system that can be upgraded with the CG23 speakers at a later date. This would give you a CG23 7.1 surround sound system, just like the one that RSL sent us. And if you want to take your system to the next level, RSL also offers complete Dolby Atmos 5.1.2 or 5.1.4 systems as well, which have the same surround sound speakers we reviewed here today but also include RSL's C34E in-ceiling height speakers. So, as you can see, RSL provides a wide variety of speaker systems in a range of prices and configurations that should meet most of anyone's needs. 
If you're interested in learning more, we highly recommend checking out RSL's website at rslspeakers.com and we'll leave a link to that in the description. They offer great customer support and in fact we called them regarding a question we had while making this review and we were quickly connected to Joe Rogers himself, one of the owners of RSL, who helped clear things right up. RSL also has their own 30-day in-home trial period on all of their products, so if you buy a system and you're not happy with it, you can return it and they'll cover all of the cost, including return shipping. So, with all of that said, we want to give another huge thanks to RSL for sending us this awesome surround sound setup. We hope you guys enjoyed the review, and if you have any questions about the system that RSL sent us, let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, have an awesome day.